Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay in Baltimore. According to American official figures, 15% of Americans live in poverty. Our next guests think it's more like one in three, over 33% of Americans living in poverty. Now joining us from Amherst, Massachusetts, is Jeanette Wicks-Lim. She's an assistant research professor at Perry Institute at the University of Massachusetts Amherst. Thanks for joining us again, Jeanette. Hi, Paul. Thanks for having me. So how do you, how do you get to your number? And what, how does anybody get to their numbers? For, I guess, first of all, how does the quote-unquote official number come to be? Well, it's interesting. The official poverty statistic comes from um, a measure that was created in the mid, well, early 1960s. And it was really um, uh, put together quickly and was kind of considered a placeholder just because the you know, the federal government wanted to have some way to measure poverty um, and basically took uh, a very low cost food plan and just multiplied it by three and decided that that was what would account for what a uh, family would need just to be at a poverty level standard of living. So that has been the measure over uh, all this time, so about 50 years now. But this official count has been criticized widely by you know, many poverty experts. And in the mid-1990s, um, the National Academy of Sciences put together a panel of poverty experts to take a look, take a real close look at this measure and figure out what's wrong with it and how do we improve it. And based on this panel, um, there were a lot of recommendations. The panel itself said, we know that the official count is wrong and we need to replace it. Uh, now, two decades later after that, in about 2011, the U.S. Census Bureau, which publishes the official count, um, came up with a new measure called the supplement, Supplemental Poverty Measure um, as a way to correct for the official count. Um, and so, uh, unfortunately, I've taken a look at this measure, and it doesn't look, in terms of the number of people who are counted as poor, it doesn't look a whole lot different than the official count. So like you said, about 15% of the American public is considered poor under the official count. With this new measure, it's only 16%. Now, when I've looked at this measure, I try to think about, well, what, what would people reasonably consider to be poor? And I think it's pretty reasonable to describe being poor as uh, somebody who can't meet their basic needs, food, shelter, um, uh, their uh, necessary medical uh, care, uh, that sort of thing. And if you actually tally up what the costs are for those things and see what the income threshold would look like uh, for those kinds, just to meet those basic needs, you're looking at something that's more on the order of two times the official poverty line. So I think that a much more accurate uh, poverty line would be something on the order of double what the official poverty line is. And that would get us to a number of one in three Americans being considered poor as opposed to the, cur the current official statistic of 15%. It changes city by city. It costs a lot more to live in New York than someplace in the South. But yeah. given that, what kind of numbers are we looking at in terms of family income? What family income, for example, in the Northeast is considered poor? Right. Well, this is really interesting because, uh, you know, I don't want to just wholly criticize this new measure that the Census Bureau has come out with. Um, the, the supplemental poverty measure actually tries to take into account cost of living differences, which the official count actually doesn't do at all. So, for example, a family of four with the official poverty line is about $23,000 a year, whether or not you live in New York City or if you live in Utica, New York, or if you live in um, you know, a small rural town in Nebraska, the same income line, uh, poverty income threshold um, applies. The supplemental poverty measure uh, tries to differentiate between those things. So they take into account, especially the housing costs, that they're double in New York versus um, in other, other uh, average uh, cost towns. So the supplemental poverty measure does make improvements, takes into account these cost of living differences um, across the country. But the, my main um, concern about the new measure is that it doesn't take into account the fact that just the, the, the poverty line itself is just too low. You're not when you actually add up what the costs are for family to families to meet their basic needs. It's really not uh, just you know a little bit more than the official poverty line. It's actually substantially more than the poverty line. Now there was a study done in the middle middle uh, mid 1990s where they a national survey done of families to see what kind of economic hardships they experienced. And what the study, uh, one study found uh, looking at the survey data was that if you looked at people who were officially poor, about 29% of them reported having some sort of critical hardship like having their utilities cut off or missing meals or not getting necessary medical care. Now, if you looked at people who were between 
uh, the poverty line and twice the poverty line, you saw a very similar rate of people experiencing critical hardships like this. You know, it went down to, I think, something like 23%. So, you know, it went down a little bit, but not a lot. And so it was only when you got above twice the poverty line did you actually see this number drop substantially to about 11%. So I think that's a pretty good marker, uh, you know, twice the poverty line of when families are actually getting to a point where they're meeting their very basic needs. And so I think that is a much more accurate measure of what people need in order to meet their food, shelter, medical care. You know. So you're saying 23,000 per family, that's the official number for how many dollars a family of four should have. So you're saying it should actually be more, more than $40,000 if you're actually right. gonna have someone out of poverty if it's a family of four. Right, exactly. Right, the official poverty income threshold is about 23,000. And I'm saying about double that is much, a much more reasonable income threshold, something on the order of $45,000 to cover a basic, the basic needs of a family of four. Uh, how does this affect public policy? Uh, does it trigger anything? Uh, I guess what I'm getting at, other than us understanding how many poor people are, right. there are in the society, how, how does this, uh, you know, what you're saying is a, is, a, is a wrongfully low number in the official estimation of poverty, how does that affect public policy? Right, well, what's interesting is that, you know, there are, a, you know, some of our large scale um, social welfare programs that recognize that people who are at twice the poverty line um, and below uh, that need help, federal assistance. If you look at like the National School Lunch Program, you know, subsidized lunches for kids and subsidized breakfasts. If you look at the Low Income Housing Energy Program, you know, that gives subsidized uh, subsidies for energy bills. Those programs actually consider people who are twice the poverty line and below to be in need. So there are programs the poverty, the official poverty line is way too low. And you see um, programs that actually count people who are twice the poverty line and below as needing subsidies, uh, needing um, help from the federal government in order to meet their basic needs. So in terms of public policy, I mean, it, you already have programs who are recognizing what, uh, what poverty actually is. It's something like twice the poverty line. But I think what's really important for people to think about is that I, I know that you know, calling yourself poor uh, doesn't feel very good. You know, it's a pretty stigmatized label. And so it feels more comfortable to think about, you know, 15%, you know, something like one in seven uh, around there, Americans being poor, and you can sort of count yourself out of that. But when you start to think about what it is that people actually need to meet their basic needs, and you recognize that it's something more like twice the poverty line, and then you see that one in three Americans are actually poor, then you're looking at you, you know, you and a group of friends a substantial number of you are going to be considered poor. And I think that to, to recognize that, to know that people are struggling that much is, um, is really important for public policymakers to consider. Right. And how, how, does, how, does this, how does this one in three number compare to other industrialized countries if you try to use similar measurements? Right. Uh, you know, I don't have international comparisons off the top of my head. Um, so I would have to go back and take a look at those numbers. Um, but I think that, you know, the number itself, one in three, I think might sound startling to people, but if you really think about how people are sort of getting by these days, uh, it starts to sound a little bit more realistic. You know, people, you know, worried about whether or not they're going to be able to make their rent, you know, worried about whether or not they can cover a health care bill, you know, worried about whether or not they're going to be able to put the food on the tables uh, that they need to. You know, that sounds a little bit more like what reality is for most Americans. All right. Okay. Thanks for joining us, Jenna. Thanks a lot, Paul. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.